Testing one, two, three, ice high dry. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. And today, another very exciting video, as we're going to be talking about the updates of the Vive Focus 3. So very exciting. But before, guys, do make sure you enable your bell after you subscribe, because we're going to be doing an awesome giveaway with a brand new HP Reverb G2. That's right. HP are sponsoring us this beauty that they will send to one lucky winner to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So as I mentioned, unable the bell after you, after you subscribe to get all the details of that video as we will be releasing the entry competition very soon. And we're also giving away a brand new pair of cyber shoes and game keys and a whole bunch more. Welcome to if you're new to the channel and a huge welcome back, of course, to all our regular viewers and awesome subscribers. So let's transfer over to to the other screen without further ado and talk about all the various different new updates to the Vive Focus 3 because I think it's pretty pretty exciting now the Vive Focus 3 uh, is in competition directly with the Pico Neo 3 Pro uh, you know who is battling for the king of enterprise or VR business who, who's gonna win it mm, only time will tell so Vive Focus 3 uh, according to Upload VR a very reputable trade magazine is getting support for much larger play area a multi headset co-location mode and 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi, what does this all mean? Well, first of all, the Five Focus 3, uh, let me just make it a bit larger so you can all see. Um, so it's a standalone VR headset, which basically means you don't need any third-party hardware to put around your room in order for the tracking to work, both for itself, the headset, and also for the controllers to work. Everything is built in, so you just plug it and play, and boom, you're done. Um, the play space at the moment, apparently, which basically means, uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, a play space... It's basically something you would draw around you when you have the VR headset on so that you don't lose any tracking and you can basically be in VR within that specific space. Now, there is a limit as to the large, you know, the width of the actual horizontal and vertical space uh, that you can play it within that specific space. So apparently, according to the latest updates, it used to be 15 by 15 meters, which is already... Wow, man, that's 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 a pretty large play space, to be honest with you, um, which is the same as the Meta's Facebook Oculus Quest 2 since June 2021 update. Uh, however, the next update will increase it by 33 by 30 meters, which basically means that this is the box currently. Let me just uh, copy image address and then let me bring it here. So currently the play space is 15 by 15 and then now it's 30 by 33, which is... Wow, I mean, that is huge. I mean, you could just imagine if you're in enterprise, uh, you know, if you're using this for business or if you're using this for, uh, you know, for, for arcades, then you can really expand your play space, have more people within the space. And then you can, you know, if you're doing training exercises, for example, at DHL or air crew or all these kind of things, you can really try to start to recreate uh, your environment at a real scale, uh, you know, within your airplane or your trucks or your factory or your school or whatever it might be uh, that you'll be using in order to recreate these experiences to train your staff or to have these uh, arcadey kind of experiences, shooters and all this kind of stuff. So this really opens up the realm of possibilities to another dimension. Um, you know, it really steps things up to, to, you know, as I mentioned, quite greatly. A new LBE location-based entertainment mode will let companies to set up a permanent play space and a feature called map sharing, which will allow the play space to be shared with other VR headsets. Now, that's fantastic, which basically means it will enable cross-play, cross-multi uh, teams with other people to be within that play space and share that same exact uh, play space. So I think that is really, really awesome uh, as opposed to having to draw the play space for each single VR headset. Uh, this will save a lot of time, I think, uh, and, and something that is very welcomed within the VR space, I think. Co-location has been rumored for Quest 2 for years, uh, but who cares about this? Uh, we're talking about the Vive Code today, uh, but with the update of the H HTC, it will be the first to bring it to standalone VR 
so that is really really awesome uh, to be able to do that I think a further update incoming in the coming months will add support for Wi-Fi 6 the new gigahertz frequency band of Wi-Fi uh, so this basically means that at the moment compared to the existing 2.4 uh, and the 5 gigahertz bands allows it will allow for higher bandwidth and less interference from other devices though we can't travel as far or penetrate walls as well 6 gigahertz uh, is so new to Wi-Fi it hasn't even been approved by most national regulators yet so Wi-Fi 6 is something that we're looking for within the next I would say maybe two years also at least a good 12 months to two to three years because the infrastructure has to be built through most of the nations throughout the world it's not something that's there but it's good to have it on paper to future proof the headset in case the technology does come out more widely available uh you know within the next whatever few months or year or, or before the next year um you know in certain locations because of course it will be a wide focus for uh probably i would say within the next 12 months or 24 months things are going to start to happen pretty fast as technology you know um is, is built faster and also once the shortage of chips is something that in, in the supply chain is resolved then VR headsets are going to come out more widely available I think every eight months or 12 to 14 months so um, definitely something good to have on paper anyway uh, compared to its competitors you know whether you can make use of it is a totally other story as I as I mentioned as nations have to catch up with this kind of stuff um, so that's for that and then the other thing is if we go to this article here by the Vive uh, focus sorry let me go to the verge first uh, so now the Vive focus is 1300 US dollars compared to its um, you know the Pico Neo 3 Pro which is only from 700 US dollars and 800 900 US dollars for the foveate rendering uh, you know honestly speaking it's very close in terms of you know the competition there uh, the only difference the real difference between the Vive Focus 3 and also the uh, Nico, Pico Neo 3 Pro is the resolution of the Vive Focus 3 is higher it is 4,896 by 2,448 pixels. Uh, and, and there are also going to be some differences in terms of the GPU inside and also the fan and the field of view is higher too. So you do get a better VR headset in terms of performance for the uh, Vive Focus 3. However, the, Vive Fo the Pico Neo 3 Pro, as I've been doing some cool videos on the channel lately, uh, you know, if you go to the VR Essentials website, that and you go here we did a few about the hand tracking uh, with the ultra leap and also side by side comparison with the pico uh, neo 3 pro versus the hp reverb g2 we also did an unboxing with a lot of nugget golden nuggets there in terms of you know um for, for example for the side by side <laughs> comparisons the side by side comparison actually shows you the level of the graphics sorry about the uh, ads there let me just skip them you know we, we actually show some side by side comparison of the graphics so really not too bad and i am trying to get um you know vive to htc sorry to send us a vive focus 3 now we are at a maybe at the moment we it's been ongoing for about six months going from a no to a maybe so hang around make sure you're unable to bail after you subscribe because maybe they'll it'll transform from the maybe to a yes who knows so we'll see how it goes i'm i'm still hopeful i never never give up uh, for you guys and off you know make sure as i mentioned you you subscribe more to the channel and reshare all the videos on your social media so we grow the channel because we're almost at 10,000 subscribers and of course the more subscribers then all these headset manufacturers will be more prone to transform the no to a maybe to a yes uh, because of course they want views right they want more and more people to see all their different things uh, okay all right so let's just go back to the to the verge here so uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm just trying to see whether they have any more information that I can provide you they have an include Vive tracker puck um 
track objects besides the focus. Oh, this is very interesting. So there's going to be a mode uh, that immediately calibrates the headset when a user puts it on the headset, uh, puts it on the head, sorry, um, instead of requiring a brief setup process. Okay, so they're going to improve the setup of the actual play space so you don't actually need to redo it every single time. Okay, well, this is something that we have, uh, for example, the Pico Neo 3 Pro at the moment and also on the Oculus uh, Facebook MetaQuest. Um, God, I really don't know how to call that headset. The branding has got a lot of problems with Facebook, I tell you. I uh, hope they get it sorted out soon. Uh, and then they have an additional calibration mode which will let the headset track objects beside the Focus 3 controller. Okay, so they're going to start tracking other things uh, which will basically enable you to know, I would imagine, who's going to be inside of the play space. So, for example, if you have an animal or a pet that comes in or also uh, if you put a mug or a table, this, this will open up, I think, more to the... Excuse me. To the enterprise meaning that perhaps if you have a keyboard inside and perhaps interest uh, introduce a little bit more hand tracking technology so this is going to be very interesting uh and and also as uh, so to when they're going to introduce this only time will tell uh what else are they going to be putting in um plugging in house sets like the original htc vive into wearable backpack computers okay move around in real physical arena with other people rather than standing in a space in a stationary space okay often relies on oft on plug-in and headsets like the original HTC Vive into wearable backpack computers that has several disadvantages it takes time to put people in the backpacks the backpack strap system may fit some users poorly and they make the experience less comfortable for everyone a lot of the headsets also require external tracking beacon like the HTC and Valve's lighthouse system uh, which must be set up overhead and can accidentally uh, block by other players. Okay, so this is something that basically they can be working on. So you just plug and play the headset. And then as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to set it up uh, each and several every single time with different players. Everyone will be able to track the same uh, play space without having to have you know a lot of the difficulty of setting things up okay uh so on the htc vibes website uh let's see if there's anything more let me just bring things up so you can see it um so basically 30 by 33 meters i mean that is huge it's a thousand square meters of place I and mean, that is that is crazy crazy um, so polygon, L shape or other custom shapes. Once the map is set up, the experience will be ready for users to dive into. There's no need to set up the map multiple times. All right, so this is just to confirm, uh, you know, what the media is talking about. Um, so most other multiplayer free roaming experience use an outside in-tracking system, which which is what we we're just talking about, like the base station, uh, you know, things. Now you don't need this. Requiring users to carry a PC VR backpack, which you won't need anymore. LBC, LBE mode users can finally run around in the field, provide cover for each other in shooting games, or share their different perspective in escape games. And also, of course, as we spoke about, the enterprise uh, VR experiences as well, like VR art galleries, professional training areas. So you're not going to have to to carry the backpack each time now. So that's pretty good. Um, the visual odometry VO mode enables users to skip the five minute environment setup and beginning to immediately go into the six stop experience uh, right after they put the headset on. Okay, that's great. That's awesome. And then they have a little, little, uh, little cartoon there, little illustration. Okay, so additional things, Space Calibrator, uh, based on the open source OpenXR Space Calibrator, they'll be released uh, with a 5 Focus 3 optimized version, uh, which enables even more possibilities for immersive experience with Vive Focus 3 by enabling support for other tracking systems. Now, I think this is 
really amazing. I'd love to know when they're going to release this um, because if it means cross collaboration, cross play with other kinds of controllers, well, that's going to be very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Um, hmm. Very, very cool. Very good stuff. So there you go. There you have it. Some uh, insights as to those who are looking to purchase a Vive Focus 3 or who have a Vive Focus 3, uh, you know, and just to know what's going on in the in, in, in the VR space as well. Guys, by the way, um, Pico Neo have sent me this brand new display port. I've yet to open it, but I will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the HP Reverb G2. It's supposed to give you 4K resolution uh, when you tether the Pico Neo 3 Pro, which is this VR headset here, to the computer. So this is going to be very interesting. Is this going to replace my HP Reverb G2? You have to enable the bell and subscribe to find out that video coming next few days. And also, by the way, guys, this brand new video coming very soon. Uh, let me just open up the um, this here. Uh, where is the uh, Kai? So this was the HTC. Uh, if you go to our, okay, it doesn't seem to be here. Uh, sorry, if you go to our, let me just transfer over. All right, so guys, if you go to our Twitter, I posted, do join our Twitter. We're at VR Essentials Numerical One, by the way. Uh, so if you go to our Twitter, here we go. Starting tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a brand new show coming to the channel called Meta Business, which is all about learning the business of VR, of AR and all this kind of stuff. Uh, starting the show with an interview, two hour long interview with Synth Riders, one of the most popular VR apps sold uh, to date. Um, and basically this is for people.